including preserving ideas of chastity, the couple, man and woman, consummate their love with the promise of a formal marriage very soon. Kurunji Pattu, one of the Pattu Pattu texts, clearly brings out the Kalavumanam concept with direct reference to Kalirutharu Punarchi. Poetic thought, dramatic performance, and Natya, as we all know, is at its best when it talks about love, wooing, secretive marriage, pangs of separation, a chastising mother, helpful friend who helps the heroine reach her lover, a soothsayer who predicts marriage, and happy formalizations of the love, etc. Gandharva Vivaha, Kalidasa Shakuntalam, Virahot Kandita Naikas, Sambhogya followed by Vipralambha Shringara, a Saki who becomes a Dhuti, Kuravanjis where Soothsayer or the Kurati comes to predict your future, and finally the heroine marries the hero in a happily ever after scenario. Are all these embeddings endlessly seen, strewn all over our literature, and therefore our music and dance? I wish to share with you this enculturation process, particularly in Kalavumanam, especially using the triad Punarchi scenarios. The first is, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the Kurunji Pattu itself, where the heroine and the hero meet in the forest. They come together with a promise of a formal marriage. Then the hero leaves her. The heroine suffers obvious pangs of separation, such as loss of appetite, etc. Her mother notices this change, calls the soothsayer to do a Velen Veriadal. Then the Sakhi or the friend breaks the reason behind why this is happening to the heroine, to the mother, and so on and so forth. That's the story of Kurunji Pattu. Lord Muruga and his marriage to Valli, the daughter of the Kurunji land, is also one that evokes this image exactly of Kalirita Ripunarchi. We see the continuum of this um, of in from the Puranic times, from the Puranas of Lord Muruga, all the way to even Shankarada Swamigal, who is a great poet and uh, composer and Nadagakarta, in his Srivalli Natakam, which was also later taken into Tamil cinema, effectively portrayed by T.R. Mahalingam and uh, actress Rukmini at that time. I do have a clipping of that, but I'm not going to show that. I think I'll skip that. I'm sure most of you have seen. If you haven't, stay glued to some KTV. You will find it very soon. A further continuum of the exploration of Kalavumanam concept is seen in the countless padams of Kshetraya and other composers extensions of this secretive premarital union and the inability to separate from the lover even after her marriage to another man. A Parakya Naika in Magudochi is perhaps a good example too. I will now demonstrate a portion of a padam composed by Ponnaya Pillai. Here, the heroine is not Valli, nor the hero Lord Muruga. But since he categorizes this padam as a Kurunji Thinai padam, he definitely uses the same Kalirita Punarchi concept as we see in uh, Kurunji Pattu for Muruga and uh, for other people, and the Kalavumanam concept in this padam. This continuum is, of course, seen way into the 20th century composition of Ponnaya Pillai as well. This is a Tamil padam. I'm sure you'll be able to follow the lines as we uh, pan it out.
20th century, I would like, Nike, I would love Nike to, I would now like to, <laughs> thank you, take you to the 21st century, bring you to the 21st century, really. Here is a clip from a contemporary Tamil cinema where the Kaliru is replaced, the wild elephant is replaced by terrorists. However, the instant attraction because of the hero's display of valor, love at first sight and physical proximity is as archaic. It is sold and it is bought by the Tamil society over and over and over again. Can you see the clip? This is from a very cheesy film called Yan. I hope you didn't miss the pupils dilating after seeing him be so valorous. Anyway, Patapata is valuable as a vital tool, along with other Sangam literatures, in the enculturation process of Tamar society. The power of these 10 texts is in creating a socializing process where art, poetry, poetic thought, music, dance, and ritual are all processed and curated and given to us. We understand this through a fine reading of Patrapata as an ethno-psychological text. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce the musicians for this morning. Thank you. On the vocal is Sri Jaikumar Bharadwaj and Srimati Archana Sridharan. On the Murava and other instruments is Pandanalur Parthasarathi. And on the fiddle is Sri Manargudi Srinivasan. And on the technical side is uh, Kurali Jagannathan. Thank you, Swarnamalya. Found that really interesting. Now I uh, open the session for question answers. If anyone would like to ask anything of Swarnamalya. Please do so. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Swanamalya. Uh, you always do something out of the box. I can't hear you very well. You always do something out of the box. Yeah, and it was very profound. <coughs> Actually, uh, the first uh, dance you did, uh, still it is performed in uh, uh, Australia. The Aborigines do it. Same, but minimum movement. But you had melody and some extra uh, civilized movements in that dance. Uh, particularly when they uh, when they hunt, when they get the food, it may be python, it may be big rat, it may be anything. They do that dance. So I saw it on uh, National Geographic and Animal Planet. It was a lovely dance uh, and a lovely research. And thank you. Thank you. It was actually, thank you very much. That's a very fascinating comment because the proto asteroid are actually aborigines of these, these regions. But the reason why I think we, yeah, 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 even now, of course, they are very much there. They're in fact, the Parnar tribes are still there in Orissa. So the Hathi, around the Hathigumba caves, there are still the Parna tribes. And um, uh, Ramachandran sir was actually telling me about this very interesting, actually, case between the Malay Kandamals 
uh, of Assam area and the Panar which came, there was a law case which where you know they were fighting whether they were a scheduled caste or scheduled tribe. Both of them belonging to the same race. However, the Panars claim to be scheduled tribes and the Panas in Orissa still speak Tamil actually. And their music, we were actually one of my friends who had uh, worked a little bit with them, had music for it, but uh, he lost the hard drive in the flood. So it's quite sad that we couldn't. I think after about 25 years, uh, an officer from the <laughs> Indian government had gone to those forests. And there we saw these uh, ladies with bare tops. And um, the, the men also were very minimally clad. And one of them had rash on the face. And I was just married at that time, 1955. And my husband said, what happened? And they said, ye muji dalaila. Then we realized that, uh, you know, yeah, they speak connection. Tamil. And also, the reason why I had little more movements was because this was not a hunting dance, this was actually a mating dance. And so we, we presumed, I mean, of course, all of us only can make a make a intelligent guess in terms of scholarship. So we just presume that it could probably be um, slightly more, th there could be these overtures, physical overtures. And it is a group dance. And um, I did not adhere to the aharya. I must have had, I must have been topless. Uh, hello, Ka. It was a very insightful lecture. Um, I just wanted to uh, clarify this thing. So the Ganikas and the Karikas, they didn't really get into storytelling, right? So they were just doing this as a very, you know, a, a primordial, very small part in their lives. Was it, uh, uh, like for instance, right now, art imitates life and life imitates art. That's where we are right now. So. Uh, yeah, it wasn't very narrative then. So what brought that change and when did this change actually happen? No, actually, I think the concept of, like I said, the Ganika, Karika and all of them as primordial dancing uh, leaders, combat leaders, they must have done savage kind of dance. But by the time of Pattapattu, we had already come into a sort of a feudal society. So we were looking at settled down inhabitants and they were, after all, eulogizing a patron. So there must have been stories. They must have, in fact, the Patipata songs, the Purana Ratrapade, for example, gives a long description of how a uh, Virali must look. You know, and she's very sophisticated from the description. She sounds like a very sophisticated woman, uh, you know, from those terms. So uh, one can also see that they must have been songstresses who would have belted out songs on the uh, maybe the love exploits or the war exploits or the valor of the patron. So that is definitely there, but not in the early Ganika concept, but definitely by the first century and later on, we would have first century CE, we would have had uh, this evolution. I really appreciate, Sarna, you are taking keen interest in the ancient classical Tamil literature. Uh, my question is, Pattu Patil, there are four uh, Atripadais. The two are Perumbana Tripade and Serupana Tripade. What is the distinction between Perumbana and Serupana? Have you? Uh, well, actually, I think here what, uh, I mean, from what I um, have understood is the Perumbana Tripade is a longer text. Textually, the verses are the number of texts is long. And the Serupana Tripade seems to be a shorter, sh shorter text with less number of. Uh, in fact, the Tirumurugatrapade is completely different. So the Tirumurugatrapade, which is probably the last of the uh, three texts, um, 